In this video, we will discuss the advantages and limitations of Thevenin equivalent circuit technique. Consider this circuit of interest. This circuit has one independent voltage source and one dependent source and this dependent source is a current control voltage source. Also the load resistor RL is connected between terminals A and B. We are interested in finding the power dissipated in the load resistor. Also what is the total power developed in this circuit and what percentage of the total power developed is dissipated in the load resistor. In order to solve this problem there are two main approaches. The first is to use circuit analysis from first principle to solve for the voltages and currents and then determine the total power dissipated in the load. In this approach one RL is included in the circuit for analysis. The second approach is to remove RL and then find the Thevenin equivalent circuit with respect to terminals A and B. Then we connect the load resistor back into the Thevenin equivalent circuit and use the Thevenin equivalent circuit to find the power dissipated in the load resistor. Let us consider the circuit analysis approach first. In this approach, the whole circuit is considered including the load resistor. This circuit can be analyzed efficiently using either node voltage method or mesh current method. Since the focus in this video is on the power calculations, the solution using node voltage method is indicated. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this solution. Once we solve the circuit using node voltage method, we can now solve for the power dissipated in the load resistor as well as the power associated with the two voltage sources. We know that the power dissipated in a resistor is given by Vi or I squared R or V squared over R. Any of these three formulas can be used. Here we know V2 which is the voltage drop across the load resistor. Hence we can use this formula to determine the power dissipated in the load resistor. Hence the power dissipated in the load resistor is V2 squared over RL and V2 is 25 volts. So this is 25 squared over 2.5 which comes out to 250 watt. Thus in this circuit 250 watts are dissipated in the load resistor. To find the power associated with the sources we can define intermediate currents. Suppose we define this branch current I1 flowing through the independent voltage source and we define this branch current I2 flowing through the dependent source. Now using the node voltages we can find I1 and I2. I1 is given by 200 minus V1 over 25. We are applying Ohm's law to this resistor. So this is voltage at this side minus voltage at this side divided by resistance. Substituting the value of V1, we get I1 is equal to 5.2 amps. Similarly, we can find I2 by applying Ohm's law to this resistor. I2 is given by V2 minus 30 Ix over 20. We know the value of V2 and Ix from the node voltage analysis. So substituting the values, we get 25 minus 30 times 4.5 divided by 20 and this comes out minus 5.5 amps. Now we can determine the power associated with the voltage sources. So the power associated with the voltage source is the product of the voltage times the current. So this is 200 times I1. 
Also, we need to use passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation. We can see that this current I1 is entering the voltage source at the terminal marked minus. Hence, we must use minus sign with the power calculation following the passive sign convention. Now, substituting values, this gives minus 200 times I1 is 5.2. So this comes out minus 1040 watts. Similarly, the power associated with the dependent source is given by the product of the voltage, which is 3Ix, and the current, which is I2. We can see that I2 is entering the terminal marked plus. Hence, following passive sign convention, we write the power calculation with a plus sign. And now we can substitute the values. So this comes to 30 times 4.5 and I2 is minus 5.5. So this comes out to minus 742.5 watt. We can see that the power value the power value is negative for both sources. This means both sources are generating power in this circuit. And to find the total power developed or generated in this circuit, we need to sum this up. So the total power generated in this circuit is the sum of this and this. And then the percentage power dissipated in the load resistor the percentage power dissipated in the load resistor is 250 over 1040 plus 742.5 expressed as a percentage and this comes out 14 percent. So this gives us the answer that the power dissipated in the load resistor is 250 watts and this 250 watts is 14% of the total power generated in this circuit. We can verify this solution using LTSpice. This is the same circuit constructed in LTSpice. When we run the simulation, we get the values for the voltages and the currents. And now if I bring the cursor on the load resistor, in the bottom left corner, we can see that the power dissipated in the load resistor is 250 watts. The dependent source is dissipating minus 742.5 watt, and the independent voltage source is dissipating minus 1040 watt, and this confirms the solution. Next, let's consider the Thevenin equivalent circuit approach. In this approach, we remove the load resistor and then we find the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance. The Thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage between the terminals of interest. This is shown here. This voltage can be found efficiently using either node voltage method or mesh current method. A solution using mesh current method is shown here and we can see that the Thevenin voltage is 100 volts. Similarly for RTH we can use either uh, the method of circuit analysis or we can use the method of deactivating the independent voltage source and then applying a test source. Either of these methods can be used. The solution using the circuit analysis method is shown here. So in this method, we short circuit the terminals of interest to find the short circuit current. This short circuit current can be found efficiently using either node voltage method or mesh current method. A solution using node voltage method is shown here. Please note that because of the short circuit, the voltage at this principle the, the voltage at this essential node is zero volt. Once we find I short circuit, then R Thevenin is given by V Thevenin over I short circuit, and this comes out seven and a half ohm. 
please pause the video here if to if you wish to study this these solutions in more detail next let's see how we can use the thevenin equivalent circuit to find the power dissipated in the load resistor this is the thevenin equivalent circuit and this is the value of rl this circuit is simple to analyze we can find this current i first so this is a single loop circuit with a single voltage source and two resistors so this current i is given by v thevenin over r thevenin plus rl and substituting the values we get the value of i as 10 amperes once we know the current we can find the power dissipated in the resistor so the power dissipated in the load resistor is i squared r and substituting the values we get the answer of 250 watts which is the same as before next let's see what happens if we attempt to find the total power generated in the source circuit using the thevenin equivalent circuit suppose we determine the power associated with the thevenin voltage source so this power is given by the product of the voltage which is 100 and the product of the current which is i and we can see that this assumed i is entering the terminal marked minus hence using passive sign convention we must use a negative sign in the power calculation and substituting values we get minus 1000 watts if we now try to use this value then the percentage power delivered to the load comes out as 250 over 1000 into 100 and this is equal to 25 percent clearly this answer is not right the correct answer for the percentage power delivered to the load is in fact 14 percent let's see why it is incorrect to use the thevenin equivalent circuit to find to try to find the total power generated in the source circuit we have seen that when we use the thevenin equivalent circuit then we get the correct answer for the power dissipated in the load resistor but when we try to use the thevenin equivalent circuit to determine the total power generated in the source circuit that answer is incorrect this is explained as follows we can use thevenin equivalent circuit to find voltages and currents which are linear variables thus when we use the formula vi or i squared r or v squared over r we can find the value of the power dissipated in the load resistor another advantage of thevenin equivalent circuit is that we can use it to find the load resistor for maximum power transfer to the load in this given problem the load resistor is two and a half ohm which is not equal to rth thus this 2.5 ohm load resistor is not drawing maximum power from the source however a limitation of the thevenin equivalent circuit approach is it cannot be used to find the total power developed in the source circuit and the reason is that power is a non-linear variable so please keep in mind these advantages and limitations when using thevenin equivalent circuit technique